Hi, I'm Sarah Swan and I do videos to help people with their mental health. Today's video is about disorganized attachment or fearful avoidant. So what is this? Um, so if you are following my channel, I have done two other videos about attachment theory. One is more in depth, one is a little bit less in depth. Um, and that kind of gives you like an overview of what they are. I also have other videos about each attachment style that are going into depth. So um, you can look at those if you'd like. So today's video is about fearful avoidant or disorganized attachment. I have a lot of experience with this attachment style because this is the one that I'm coming from, which means I was both anxious and both avoidant. So it basically takes the other two insecure attachments and kind of puts it all into one, which makes it very messy and very confusing. So let's go into it. Um, as I was saying, they have the best in the both, they, they have the worst of both worlds essentially because they have both attachment, other insecure attachment styles kind of in it. And so depending on who you meet, um, I know with me, if I met someone that was more anxious, I was more avoidant. If someone was more avoidant, I was more anxious. Sometimes it would be based off of a trigger and then I would kind of go back and forth. Um, there were times that I would be friends with some friends and I would want that connection. And then all of a sudden in my brain, I would come up with some kind of like emotion or, or words or something, some thought that would make me kind of pull away. And so I had to become conscious of all this so I could change it essentially. But so it's like you want connection, but you also don't, which makes it very confusing. You're avoidant, but you're also anxious because anxious attachment wants connection. Avoidant wants to avoid connection. They want space. Um, so yeah, so no rhyme or reason. That's why it's called disorganized. And, and, and it could be sometimes different scenarios, different people. Um, I think it's also very unique for each individual. Um, if you are fearful avoidant, sometimes you lean more anxious, which I actually have been leaning more anxious. Although I've had periods in my life where I was more avoidant. So you could also lean more avoidant. Um, I've also had periods of my life where literally I'm both at one time, which not cool. Um, so yeah, it just depends. And that's why it's like no rhyme or reason. Um, so a lot of times, uh, let's see. So a lot of times if you are, if you are, um, fearful avoidant, you will have a negative view of yourself and of others. So it's not just yourself, like, um, with other attachment styles, like anxious, they have a negative view of themselves, but positive of others. And if you're avoidant, you have a positive view of yourself, but negative of others. Well, with this attachment, you tend to have negative of both. Um, you are very untrusting of yourself and very untrusting of others. Um, you put others on a pedestal sometimes. Um, and, um, yeah, you put them on the pedestal and you go, you can be very hyper vigilant, just like the anxious attachment. You're very hyper vigilant. You're paying attention to others. You can be this people pleaser where you know exactly what they need. Um, which also brings to light that if you are fearful avoidant, you probably aren't paying attention to your own needs. You know what the other needs are, but not necessarily yours. Um, it also creates isolation. So for me, I literally felt like I was isolated because at one point in my life, I felt that I couldn't trust other people at all. And then I decided I could only trust some people and then those people, because I got a divorce, um, they pulled away. And so all of a sudden, I can no longer trust them. And then I realized at the point I didn't trust myself and I had a lot of self-doubt. So I was kind of put into this very bubble that in my life, I had a lot of shame, guilt. I had all these like kind of repressed emotions from childhood kind of there. And so I had to decipher it. Um, and it kind of isolates you from other people. Um, and so, and also because, um, also the isolation is also because this whole like, you want closeness, but you don't. And so a lot of times you push pull dynamics with people. Um, it causes other people to be confused. And when you have that push pull, the hot cold kind of thing, um, 
You can also do the push-pull where when you want connection, you really want it, but also to not get connection, you might get angry at other people and criticize and, and kind of like do that. And of course that pulls people away. And so when you start doing that, it's hard to make relationships. That's another reason why you can kind of isolate yourself into this. So it's hard for you to make those friends. Um, but as you heal, you are able to kind of get to there. Um, you also might be very highly emotional. I know I was. Um, you might have a hard time processing your emotions. I used to, and sometimes I still do, and I get triggered here and there. And um, But it was like this high emotion, um, a lot of emotions, like emotional flooding. And, and it was like this huge amount of processing because this kind of attachment style not only has the core abandonment wound, which is anxious, but they also have the enmeshment wound. They have the more avoidant kind of wound where their emotions were kind of dismissed. And so you're dealing with a lot more core issues than with the other two insecure attachments. And so sometimes you get triggered more. You have a lot more stuff going on and you're trying to heal all that stuff. So um, in a lot of times it can be very hard. Um, like I said, you can be people pleasers, not in touch with yourself. Um, and um, another thing is connection. So in this kind of attachment style, you might really, really want connection. And um, you might have learned that, you know, you can get connection. And sometimes it felt safe, but then sometimes it felt unsafe. And so that's why you kind of want it at the same time, but don't want it. Um, so... And also like this idea of the child's needs not getting met. Maybe connection was safe in this aspect, but it wasn't safe in another aspect. And so that's, again, that's what creates the push-pull. Also, another thing I've noticed with fearful avoidance is passive. So sometimes they might be passive. I did this um, iceberg thing like three years ago as I started to heal four years ago. And um, it was all about being submissive. And because I was this high people pleaser, this overachiever, um, and I was always worried about the other person, and I was very hyper vigilant towards the other person, essentially. And so I was very submissive, very passive. Sometimes you feel like a helpless victim. And so um, rather than fighting for what your needs are, or even knowing what your needs are, you might actually just kind of put them down, and you kind of become submissive. Um, and then another thing is um, sometimes um, with this whole connection thing, you might want connection, but something might have happened in your connection that caused you to fear them. I know with me, if I have a connection with someone and I start getting triggered, um, it's like I'll start having these fears come up. And it, like this idea of getting hurt will come up. Um, sometimes I've had things where the whole thing with sharing for me, um, a lot of times with um, this type of attachment style, like you want to share but you don't. So you go from oversharing to undersharing to being more vulnerable to not being more vulnerable and like this whole thing goes back and forth. Or like you have too many walls up but then you, you don't have walls, you know, and it's like back and forth, back and forth, which makes it really cold, really hard. Um, like the whole hot cold is the best analogy, you know, you run hot and cold. Um, I've actually had a child years ago in my classroom, I used to be a teacher, and I had a child who would one day come up to you and want to give you a hug and be really loving and like want to give you a hug. But then a little bit later, the same child would do something like throw a toy at you and call you names. And so he, he this was his way of pulling back. So a lot of times anger can be a way of you avoiding that connection. And so he was very hot, cold, hot, cold. And so he he was three-year-old. And um, granted, if you have that type of attachment style as a three-year-old, if the parents are conscious enough and, and the schools are conscious enough, you can, you can help those children so they don't continue that throughout their life. Um, so, and I think a lot of times it... I think with this particular kid, there was definitely a trauma going on. Um, and um, But anyway, he had this hot, cold thing going on where he wanted connection. He didn't want connection. It was fearful, but yet he also wanted it. And, and it's like back and forth, back and forth. So common ideas, and I don't want to ramble too much, common ideas. So 
it might be something like people will hurt me. People can't be trusted. People don't care about me. People will leave me. What I do for you makes me worthy of love. So this is basically based on the achievement base. So you might actually try to achieve for others and people please. Um, it's like external worth. Feeling helpless and power powerless. Something is wrong with me. I am bad. This is also with um, insecure attachment for um, anxious as well. Because a lot of times you tend to blame yourself for what you're doing. And even um, avoidance essentially, they just, it's kind of repressed. Um, my needs don't matter. I will be rejected or abandoned if I don't cater to their needs. And so it also, um, and also the enmeshment stuff. I've, in the past, I had stuff with enmeshment come up. Like, if I get too close to this person, I will lose my identity or I will feel enmeshed, right? And I've also had stuff come up where if, um, if I get too close to the person and I get too attached to them, what happens if they leave me? You know, like this idea of abandonment would come up. You know, I didn't want them to leave me. So before we go, I have a quote, um, and this would come from the, the disorganized or the fearful avoidant attachment and what they would kind of be sort of feeling. So I am like a scared rabbit. I want close relationships, but I'm scared of getting hurt. It is hard for me to trust both myself and others. Depending on those around me, my attachment style can change from avoidant to anxious, sometimes both. This makes it confusing for others. I am highly intuitive and empathic of others' needs, but I might forget my own needs. I often show up as a people pleaser or a high achiever or both. So um, I did forget to add that. So a lot of times um, people that are anxious attachment and are disorganized attachment, fearful avoidant, um, they tend to be very intuitive and very empathetic. So they're very like they would be known as the empaths because they're so focused on the other people's needs and they're highly um, sensitive to the environment and they're they're um, hyper focused. So and they notice these little changes. Um, so they're more conscious of it. Um, the only thing is sometimes you might be conscious of it, but you might come up with the wrong meaning or the wrong conclusion. So um, if you think about it, you know, allow it to rest and be whether is this from my subjective view or is this more objective then you're able to start to be able to really be conscious of the other person um so yeah that's why i said they're very intuitive and they're very um, empathetic so anyway this is my video about fearful avoidance um so in the future i'm doing more videos so my goal is to create videos to help you gain a connection to yourself and connection to others um, through the creative arts. I am an artist, I do painting, I am learning ukulele, <laughs> as you can see from some of the videos. But um, yeah, so anyway, um, I wanna do more videos about that. Um, stuff like love addiction, um, anxious avoidant trap, um, and also just gaining connection to yourself, like self-love, self-worth, and all that stuff. So anyway, I hope to provide more videos for you, and if you like this, please, please like, please subscribe, and if you have any ideas of video topics, absolutely tell me. So um, anyway, I hope you have a good day. And if you like it that much, share it. So thank you.